Ja, men hej Sven Svejsan och välkommen till det här avsnittet och den här dagen som jag snackade lite om förra veckan. Konstigt, jag har inte bett forta sedan förra veckan. <laughs> kan det vara att man spelar in flera saker på en gång? Ja, fundera på det du. Eller också så är jag fler vita forter. Nåväl, jag ska inte bli så långrande utan vad jag vill säga helt enkelt det är att eh, idag så ska vi titta på en kille som heter Reagan. Mr. Reagan, vad jag vet i alla fall. Det är ju utländskt och det kanske ibland kan vara lite knepigt att ta till sig allt som utländskt. Jag har ju textat det efter konstens alla regler, givetvis. Jag googeltextar automatiserar inte. Jag gör textning på riktigt med riktiga översättningar. Vi har ju sett många konstiga försök av folk som gör det och det blir ju bara pannkaka av det. Nej, det är väl översatt och du hänger med. Men det här är väldigt intressant för att... För den här killen som vi naturligtvis räknar som konservativ, vad han tar upp, och det gör han i många fina program, jag lägger länk till honom här nere, han är väl värd att lyssna på Mr. Reagan, Mr. Reagan eller Mr. Reagan, Reagan tror jag han kallar sig. Han kommer ju då att prata om vad gör vi och världen om Trump blir vald till president igen november i år. Ja, det är faktiskt i år som blir dags igen. Hur kan fyra, tre, fyra år försvinna så snabbt? Nåväl, han funderar på det och han tar upp det ur många aspekter. Även eh, mörka aspekter. För eh, ja, jag sa förra lördagen att jag var ju väldigt tveksam till om eh, Mr. Trump överhuvudtaget kommer att eh, kunna ställa upp i valet. Någonting säger mig, min gamla inbyggda radar kanske kommer att hända. Han lever inte ofarligt, men det vill jag inte måla fan på väggen. Men de håller ju på nu, de här vänsterdemokraterna, så att man tappar all respekt för det där landet och dess, dess rättsväsende. Det får inte gå till så där om man ska kalla sig en, en ledande nation i världen. Nej, det där hör hemma i bananstater och tredje världen länder. Men så är det i alla fall, det har han att slåss emot, någonting kommer att hända och naturligtvis vad kommer de att göra i Vänsterdemokraterna med Biden? Biden, ja jag vet men Biden det är så mycket roligare. Men vad gör de? Att inte Biden kan ställa upp ett varv till, det är ju alldeles uppenbart. Han kan ju knappt ställa upp ens i morgondag för att göra någonting. Det är mänskligt sett, om vi håller oss bara till rent mänskligt så är det inte en vacker syn. Mr. Regan här, han pratar och um, han erkänner det är spekulativt och det är klart att det måste vara spekulativt. Det är ju ingen, ingen som kan se in i framtiden. Vore det någon som vet om det så har jag några tipskuponger här som jag gärna skulle vilja fylla i om, om vi verkligen kan se in i framtiden. Men så är det ju sällan. Men han funderar och han gör det på ett väldigt bra sätt och jag tycker nog att du ska ta den här stunden och kika på hans program. Därför att det är, ja, det är faktiskt intressant att tänka efter. Därför att många som är för Trump, de tror ju liksom att nu är det liksom bara raka spåret rätt in i Vita husets ovala rum. Um, nej, det tror inte jag. Och om det skulle vara så att han faktiskt lyckas ta sig dit, ja hur blir tiden efter det? Det finns många saker att fundera på. Mr. Regan, han gör det i det här inslaget. Och varför ska jag sitta och tala för honom? Han talar så mycket bättre för sig själv. Så att med det så ska jag vilja bara säga att eh, du är jättesnäll om du trycker på tummen upp. Om du trycker på prenumerera. Och du får gärna stötta kanalen. Det finns inget förbud mot det. Om du vill. Så att med det sagt så, ja, varsågod Mr. Regan. Scenen är din. Jag har lagt hans, jag vill säga det också, jag har meddelat honom det här, att jag gör det här avsnittet. Och jag har naturligtvis också lagt länken till honom här nere. Nu så, Mr. Regan, varsågod. What if Donald Trump wins in 2024? Mr. Reagan. This video is speculative. I'm speculating about what happens if Donald Trump wins the presidential election. And my conclusions are not good. Now, you've all heard that Trump was taken off the ballot in Colorado, and I'm sure you've all heard the more recent news that he was taken off the ballot in Maine. These are unconstitutional abuses of power, and these cases will certainly go to the Supreme Court and will undoubtedly be shut down. However, this shows the desperation of the deep state. The deep state is willing to expose their own corruption just to keep Donald Trump out of office. And why are they so desperate? 
Well, we know the answer to that. They do not control Donald Trump. And Trump is committed to taking down the deep state. And so Trump poses an existential threat to the deep state. The last time Donald Trump was president, he put a big dent in the deep state and he temporarily shut down some of their operations. The spigots through which the corrupt money flowed through Washington were twisted down and that flow dwindled to a slow drip. And so they desperately want to avoid another Donald Trump presidency. But more than that, they want to stop anyone like Trump, anyone they don't control from ever being president ever again. And so the plan of the deep state will not just be about keeping Donald Trump from interfering with their corruption. It's about taking full control of the country and taking full control of the vote in every future election. So if Trump is elected, what's the plan? Well, I think I figured it out. A Donald Trump election actually provides the deep state with a unique opportunity. It provides an opportunity to make Donald Trump look bad, look really bad. It's an opportunity to make the American people truly believe that Trump is the authoritarian dictator that the mainstream media has been insisting that he is since 2015. Now, it has been speculated that Donald Trump is so ahead in the polls and that he will do so well in 2024 that the Democrats cannot beat him even with a fixed election. Scott Adams presented a rather dire observation regarding this on X. He wrote, Trump's polling strength has already put him beyond the margin of cheating in a hypothetical rigged election. That's the bad news because it means that the other options for Democrats to stop him move to the front. Has Biden removed Trump's Secret Service protection yet or is that play reserved for Kennedy? In other words, Trump is doing so well in the polls, it may actually have put him at risk for assassination. And a lot of people agree. However, I don't think that this will happen. If Trump were to be assassinated, it would almost certainly trigger a civil war, or at least a coup d'etat. The deep state probably does not want a civil war. They they probably do not want a coup. Most people are afraid of death, even the leaders of the deep state. Civil wars and coup d'etats are unpredictable things. They can get very messy. And you never know who might get caught in the crossfire. These people are not warriors. They're white-collar criminals. They're cowards. I think they're afraid of civil war. And I think that they've shown they're afraid. I think that the January 6th PSYOP and their disproportionately aggressive response to it was, in part, an attempt to tamp down any serious thoughts of civil war. Innocent protesters have been arrested and held in terrible conditions, convicted of crimes they did not commit, and sentenced to absurd stretches in federal prison. The FBI and the deep state was trying to send a message with these arrests, these trials, and these convictions. That message, if you rise up against us, we will destroy you. And why did they do this? Why did they send this message? Because they're afraid. They're afraid that a real insurrection would end them. But the plan backfired. Those with a willingness to revolt are now more resolved than ever. So I don't think the deep state will try to take out Donald Trump. It's too dangerous. And furthermore, as I said, if Trump is elected again, it may actually provide a unique opportunity for the deep state, not only to destroy Trump, but to end the possibility of anyone they do not control from ever being elected president ever again. I'll explain all of this in one moment. First, of course, I have to sell you something. If you're trying to navigate market turbulence, why not set course to the Noble Gold Investments safe haven? With global uncertainty looming, your savings and retirement plans are under siege. But there's one asset that has stood the test of time, gold. Unlock the peace of mind that comes with owning gold, the ultimate safe haven. And if precious metals are new to you, Noble Gold Investments will hold your hand through the whole process. They have a team of experts who will guide you every step of the way. Thousands of investors have sheltered their retirement savings with Noble Gold Investments. Don't leave yourself exposed to the markets right now. It's way too risky. With gold at an all-time high and looking to climb further, it's the perfect time. Open a Noble Gold Investments IRA and secure your future with a free gold bullion coin. Act now before it's too late. Call 877 877- 646-5347 and claim your free coin before it's gone. Or visit noblegoldinvestments.com right now. Noblegoldinvestments.com, the only gold company I trust. So I don't think the deep state will take out Donald Trump. But if Trump is elected, what is the deep state planning? Ever since he announced his first presidential campaign in 2015, the mainstream media has warned us that Trump will be an authoritarian dictator. Unfortunately for them, Trump was president for four years and he did not act in any way dictatorial. They created the whole January 6th PSYOP in order to sell this dictator lie to the American people, but it didn't work. 
Trump is now more popular than ever, but they still keep saying it. Why? First of all, some people in the American voting public believe it. They believe that Trump is a dictator or will be a dictator. But here's the thing. I suspect that the deep state really does believe that under the right circumstances, they think they can sell this lie to the American people. But how? Well, in order to convince the American people that Trump is a dictator, the deep state would have to compel Donald Trump into taking real dictatorial action. They would need to compel Trump to assume emergency powers or to declare martial law or something similar to that. Now, I believe that they tried to compel him to take this sort of drastic action last time he was president with the BLM and Antifa riots. But Trump did not take the bait. So now they need to give Trump an even bigger reason, something Trump can't ignore, a terrorist attack. Now, I've thought through this from every angle, guys, and I truly believe this. I believe the deep state is planning a massive terrorist attack in 2025. Follow my logic on this. The border has been open since 2021. This tweet from Molly Hemingway says it all. On his first day in office, Biden issued seven executive orders going out of their way to destroy the border protections his predecessor had enacted. Seven. And he kept going. Why do we pretend that the border disaster is anything other than completely intentional? The president has the ability today, right now, this morning, he could do executive orders. He could stop this. This administration likes illegal activity in the form of immigration. They support it. They're leaving the borders open on purpose. This is not an accident. And we know terrorists are crossing in. Here's House Homeland Security Chairman Mark Green with me here last weekend on the number of people apprehended at the border who were actually on the U.S.'s terrorist watch list. 294 terrorist watch list folks since this president came to office, compare that to only 11 during the entire Trump administration. My friend Ashley Clare broke a story just the other week about migrants being flown around the country in first class, paid for, of course, by you, the American taxpayer. I'm at the Phoenix airport right now. I'm waiting to board my flight to New York, uh, to JFK. And it looks like we have a whole lot of migrants who are also boarding this flight that the U.S. taxpayers are paying for. Premium seats on Delta, shipping them out to New York City because guess what? Everywhere else is at capacity. So they have these sanctuary cities like New York that they're now shipping these migrants to that we're all paying for. We've never quite understood why the border is open. We've speculated. We know that Democrats expect the next generation of immigrant children to vote for them. But the terrorist threat is very real. And the Biden administration seems to be completely ignoring it. But maybe they're not ignoring it. Maybe that is the whole point. Maybe the terrorists aren't just getting in by chance. Maybe their successful infiltration is being facilitated. These terrorists are certainly organized. They're probably getting their instructions in Arabic or Urdu or Pashto or Farsi. And they would certainly believe that they're getting these instructions from a shadowy Islamic leader somewhere in the Middle East. But this shadowy leader, if my theory is correct, is actually our own FBI or CIA. Of course, the terrorists themselves do not know this. They believe that it's someone in Iran or Afghanistan. They would have no idea that they're actually pawns in a deep state plot, that they're working for the American intelligence agencies. If my theory is correct, then the huge mass of illegal immigrants that we've seen flooding over the border, this is a smokescreen. This overwhelming mass of illegals makes it almost impossible for Border Patrol to catch all the terrorists coming through. And this also provides a believable explanation for a terrorist threat existing in America. I believe that any terrorist attack that has been planned specifically in order to compel Donald Trump to enact emergency powers and to declare martial law would have to be massive. It would have to be, in my estimation, bigger than 9-11. If there are sleeper cells positioned strategically around the country, this attack could hit the U.S. in multiple locations all at once. In fact, I believe some journalists have already been told to expect an attack. Check out this prediction from Catherine Herridge. I just feel a lot of concern that 2024 may be the year of a black swan event. This is a national security event with high impact that's very hard to predict. Um, there are a number of cons uh, concerns that I have that factor into that. Not only this uh, sort of enduring heightened threat level that we're facing, uh, the wars in Israel, also Ukraine. And we're so divided in this country in ways that we haven't seen before. And I think that just creates fertile ground for our adversaries like North Korea, China, and Iran. And that's what uh, concerns me most. And I think we will get more and more warnings from journalists just like this right up until an actual attack.
Now, she's talking about 2024, but what if it's not 2024? What if instead the attack happened in 2025, after Donald Trump has been elected president? After such a massive terrorist attack, Trump would have to act, and he would have to act in an extreme fashion. And whatever action he took, and whatever action he takes, he will be labeled a dictator. Trump will have to round up the terrorists and all of those working with them, many of whom may be American citizens. When this happens, the news media will accuse Trump of targeting American citizens. The terrorists and their allies will undoubtedly be from non-white regions. And so the news media will accuse Donald Trump of targeting people of color. In order to curtail another attack, Trump will also have to round up and deport other illegal aliens not associated with the terrorist attack, and this will also be characterized as dictatorial. The media will run body cam footage and smartphone video of raids around the country. In these videos, you will hear women screaming and children crying. They will interview the families of those deported, and they will put all of their resources into drawing up sympathy for the illegal aliens targeted for deportation. And this propaganda will be effective. The mainstream media will again insist that Trump is going to refuse to give up the presidency, that he will use his emergency powers to stop the 2028 election, and remain in power. They will claim that because this is his second term, he has nothing to lose, and that he will try to remain president indefinitely. The Democrats in Congress will then conspire with corrupt establishment Republicans to impeach and remove the dictator Donald Trump. Now, some might argue that terrorist attacks tend to galvanize the public behind a president. This is what happened in 9-11. But I think they've planned for that. In order to stop the country from galvanizing behind Donald Trump, the media will frame the attacks as Trump's fault. Either the FBI will discover, or the terrorists themselves will claim, that the attack was a reaction to some foreign policy of Donald Trump's. Trump will be lambasted by the media. There will be a propaganda campaign the likes of which we have never seen before. The blame for the biggest terrorist attack in US history will be fixed entirely on Donald Trump. And if this works, Many American voters, the moderate Democrats who voted for Trump in 2024, the independent voters who supported him, and even many moderate Republicans will turn against Trump. And this will stop them from galvanizing behind him. And then the end game. After Trump is impeached and removed by the Democrats and the corrupt deep state Republicans in Congress, the media will convince gullible Americans that the dictator warnings were all true and that Americans should never vote for anyone like Trump ever again. We must always vote for the candidates that they recommend. And if they're successful and gullible Americans fall for this, if enough voters are too afraid to vote against the recommendations of the so-called experts, well, then the deep state wins. They will be able to choose all future presidents in perpetuity. And there is an even more sinister aspect to this plan. If Trump enacts emergency powers or declares martial law and is then impeached and removed, whoever it is that the deep state installs will inherit those powers, and I suspect that they will never relinquish them. In such a case, the installed deep state president will permanently adopt a level of authoritarian control that was never intended for the U.S. president. Of course, you may be wondering, if Trump is impeached and removed, then won't his vice president step in? What happens then? Well, I predict three possible outcomes. One, the deep state already controls the VP. This will be possible for most of Trump's potential VPs as they don't have the wealth or integrity needed to protect themselves against the bribes or threats of blackmail from the deep state. So it doesn't really matter who the VP is, they will simply be a puppet of the deep state. Two, the VP steps aside and the line of succession is somehow circumvented and the deep state puppet is then installed. This, of course, would still be the result of deep state coercion. Three, there is a constitutional crisis that the Democrats and the media will claim requires a special election. And of course, the deep state candidate will win that election and therefore be installed. Now, I think the first option is the most likely. I believe that the deep state wants to install Nikki Haley. I believe that Haley is compromised and that the deep state controls her. Nikki, you were bankrupt when you left the UN. After you left the UN, you became a military contractor. You actually started joining service on the board of Boeing, whose back you scratched for a very long time, and then gave foreign multinational speeches like Hillary Clinton is, and now you're a multimillionaire. That math does not add up. It adds up to the fact that you are corrupt. And when I said they were bought and paid for, I meant the Republican establishment, not the Democratic establishment. Now you have Reid Hoffman, the person who's effectively George Soros Jr., funding lawsuits across this country against 
Donald Trump to keep him off the ballot, funding left-wing causes. We discover this week that he is one of Nikki Haley's largest supporters. Larry Fink, the king of the woke industrial complex, the ESG movement, the CEO of BlackRock, the most powerful company in the world, now supporting Nikki Haley. And to say that doesn't affect her is false because it's after that meeting later that day that she says that every American needs to be doxxed by having their ID, their government issued ID, tied to what they say on the internet. So I think that this is far more corrupt than I even imagined when I entered politics. This is why they've been pushing her to be VP. Former Speaker of the House Kevin McCarthy said that he would advise former President Trump to choose Nikki Haley as his running mate. The mainstream media have already put out rumors that Trump is considering Nikki Haley. Is Trump really considering Haley? Or is this just more deep state pressure? Maybe it's a way to test the response of the voter to see how such a matchup plays. It's difficult to know. I believe that there are deep state surrogates, those who are not known to be connected to the deep state, people who Trump might actually even trust, who have told Trump that if he chooses Nikki Haley, that he will get support from the RNC, that he will get support from the big donors and the establishment Republicans, the entirety of the Republican political machine in DC, essentially the cooperation of the deep state. For Trump, this is actually tempting. With the cooperation of the deep state, Trump would not be cheated out of winning a second time. And Trump's victory in 2024 would be assured. But this comes with a price. If my speculation is correct, the terrorist attack will be executed within the first year of Trump's presidency. He will be blamed, impeached, and removed from office soon after. There will be a short window provided for Trump to react, maybe a couple of months, so that he can take executive actions that the media will then be able to characterize as dictatorial. And so, it's a devil's bargain. It's a trick. If Trump agrees to Nikki Haley, he will be president for a few months, the terrorist attack will be executed, Trump will be ousted soon after, and Nikki Haley will be installed as president. Of course, as soon as the CBS Nikki Haley rumor came out, the reaction was swift. Well, I would not only not vote for that ticket, I would, I would advocate against it as strongly as I could. Wow. Wow. Yeah. I well, that, that's, I, just, I, that's just poison. I mean, here's someone who's actively opposed to the interests of the country I grew up in, who endorsed the BLM riots, and who is... Not only is it's not left, but is neoliberal in the darkest, most speaking of nihilist, nihilistic mm -hmm. way, and has no real popular support. Is like is a creature of the oligarchs. So yeah, that would be that would be reason to oppose the ticket. After Tucker said this, everyone on Twitter immediately agreed. No patriotic MAGA conservative wants Nikki Haley in there. Is Nikki Haley really even a chance to be his VP? Surely the base, Trump's base, wouldn't want her on the ticket. But the truth is that Trump has very few options when it comes to avoiding a deep state controlled VP. Basically everyone else running for the Republican nomination, except maybe Vivek Ramaswamy, would be deep state controlled. And it is imperative that Trump chooses a VP that is not deep state controlled, because choosing a deep state controlled VP would ensure that this plan will be executed and that Trump will be removed from office within the first year. And there are just very few options that I think are relatively safe. Carrie Lake, Vivek Ramaswamy, Tucker Carlson, Matt Gates, Jim Jordan, J.D. Vance, Tim Scott, Ben Carson, General Flynn, Ron Paul, Rand Paul, and if he really wants to guard himself against the deep state, Don Jr. Let me know your VP choices in the comments section below. Now, if you're still not convinced, consider this. Hollywood is already seeding this idea. Recently, a movie trailer dropped in which an American president, who is clearly a perverse caricature of Donald Trump, has taken authoritarian control of America using military force against American citizens, and it's up to a ragtag team of leftist journalists to stop him. The three-term president assures the uprising will be dealt with swiftly. The so-called Western forces of Texas and California have suffered a very great defeat at the hands of the United States military. Mr. President, do you regret the use of airstrikes against American citizens? We need to go down there. They shoot journalists on sight in the Capitol. There's some kind of misunderstanding here. What? Right. Well, you're American, okay? What kind of American are you? <laughs> move, move, move! One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This movie will plant a seed in the minds of Americans, the idea of what a dictator looks like. 
This film and others like it will condition Americans to perceive legitimate presidential actions taken as a response to a terrorist attack as authoritarian. Hollywood and the deep state in Washington, D.C. have been connected for a long time. Consider that Barack Obama is now producing films on Netflix. Now, many of you may be watching this and think, this guy is crazy. This is a tinfoil hat, Alex Jones style conspiracy theory. But listen, I have created a few videos like this before. In the first video that I made after January 6th, I said, this looks like a PSYOP. And I speculated that January 6th was a Reichstag fire PSYOP orchestrated by the FBI or other agencies in the federal government in coordination with Pelosi and other deep state players in order to create the illusion that Donald Trump was leading a coup and that Trump supporters are dangerous. At the time, leftists insisted that such claims were crazy conspiracy theories, but now we know it was all true. After the Mar-a-Lago raid, I noticed that everything the Democrats were charging Donald Trump of if he were to be convicted of relevant crimes, would prohibit him from running for public office ever again, prohibit him from running for president. So I made a video speculating that this was the plan to try Trump for crimes such as engaging in insurrection, which would prohibit him from running for president in 2024. At the time, this seemed like a crazy conspiracy theory, even to me, because it meant that Democrats would have to actually indict Donald Trump and try him in courts of law. This would expose them as obviously corrupt. Well. They did indict Trump, and he is currently being tried in several courts of law, exactly as I predicted. I then speculated that the ultimate plan of the Democrats was to remove Trump from the ballots, regardless of any relevant criminal convictions. At the time, this also seemed like a crazy conspiracy theory. And now look what's happened in Colorado. Look what's happened in Maine. And listen, I grant you that what I'm saying here in this video, this is the most extreme speculation that I have had about the plans of the left. And although they may not end up executing this plan, I do believe that this is what some people in the deep state have been planning. And I believe that those members of the deep state fully expect to execute this plan. I don't know if a terrorist attack on the United States by the deep state is a certainty, but I do believe it's a strong possibility. All right, let's end this video on a positive note. I do hope that I'm wrong. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. Happy New Year. Let's make 2024 the year that we save this country. Good night, everyone. God bless America. We're at war with the most dangerous enemy that has ever faced mankind in his long climb from the swamp to the stars. And it's been said if we lose that war and in so doing lose this way of freedom of ours, history will record with the greatest astonishment that those who had the most to lose did the least to prevent its happening. If we lose freedom here, there's no place to escape to. This is the last stand on earth.